I uh, came to work here with Jack Daniel in 1968 full time. I worked uh, here during my high school and college days and when Frank Bobo was the master distiller they asked me but I'd like to come to work here. So in 1968 I came to work full time and worked with him 20 years and when he retired in 1988 I was made the master distiller at that particular time. I lived two miles up the road, thought I'd be a veterinarian in life but it turned out different. <laughs> So you purposely came to Jack Daniels to be an apprentice, so to speak, to be a, dis a, a master distiller. Well, what would that role be I called? guess usually when I first started here, it was a job, and, and I didn't know whether I would even stay here or not, or stay in the same department. But two or three years, four years, five years, next thing you know, it's ten years and fifteen years, all in one area. And Frank had had a misfortune of getting. A couple of steam burns around mm -hmm. around steam, and it wasn't major, but he was off a few days. And you know, I fell in and tried to make sure that everything was running correctly while he was off. And at that time, it kind of dawned on me. I said, you know, this might be something I'd like to do, and and we'd have his job. So, oh, 1988, then it, it fell my spot. But again, probably when I first came here, I didn't think about the master just doing it. But one thing about it, it my job has changed considerably in the last five or six years, being here almost 40 years, being from Lynchburg, uh, being around where the product is made for so many years, the company has asked me to kind of be a little uh, spokesperson. So with that said, I do have the opportunity to, to travel around the world and every state in the union in about 40 different countries talking about Jack Daniels. How many master distillers has Jack Daniels had? Well, I'm the sixth one, and Jack being the first one, and uh, he he was born here in Lynchburg, and actually Jack, my mother and father, are buried just a few feet from where Jack is buried. But he grew up here and buried here, and uh, became owner of the company at a very very uh, early age. And uh, and uh, he again he was a distiller at that time. And the other distillers uh, that have been here are all from been from Lynchburg, uh, grew up here and, and worked around the process. Uh, there's not any uh, de degrees out there for a distiller, but we're into chemistry and biology. Matter of fact, I'm the first one that had a degree, but the next one to come along, and we, I like to look at it like this, a hundred and something years ago, where was Jack Daniel made? Almost out in the woods or a barn here. It was not illegal, it was before mm -hmm. prohibition, and that's the way things were made. They didn't have a gas chromatograph or the ways of measuring specific gravity of alcohol, and it was all an art. But today we do have a nice quality control lab that we can run a lot of tests in. So it's more of an art and a science today than what it was, say, a hundred and something years ago. What at what point did um, the, first, the, the development of Tennessee whiskey fit into, into, the, into the history? Well, we have records that indicate in 18 and 90 there was like 14 little stills in this little community of, around Lynchburg. And it was there because of the water. And uh, Jack Daniels still at that particular time was not the largest still by any means. So prohibition set in, set in in this country and in, in Tennessee even earlier than it did U.S. wide. So 1913, Tennessee went into prohibition and did not come out until 1938. Now 38 started back up, and uh, Jack Daniel had already passed away due to that accident. And his, his nephew Lim Motlow was now the owner of the company, getting it going back. And we had the charcoal mellowing process here at Lynchburg, even again when it shut down for Prohibition. And after Prohibition, they were going to put Jack Daniel name in with the bourbon product. But with the charcoal mellowing process, the Motlow family went to the government and said, look, we have a little different process here, meaning the charcoal mellowing, and we would like to be called something other than a bourbon. So with that, the government granted them the right and a privilege to be called a Tennessee Sour Mice Whiskey, strictly due to the charcoal mellowing process. And who first came up with the charcoal me mellowing process? Was we, we really don't know no. that. Well, I can tell you that when Jack Daniel became owner of the steel, it was given to him by Dan Call, a Lutheran minister, at a very young age. Well, Jack, soon after, came up to here at this location where the cave is, where we get our water from, and he bought the cave and the property, and there was a little steel there, and they were using the charcoal process. 
And at that time, the area that we're in now was called Lincoln County, and they referred to this mellowing process as the Lincoln County process. So we just continued on with it from, from that point on. The charcoal removes some of the undesirable grainy flavors and aromas from it, and it makes it a little more mellowing product, mellow product when it goes into the barrel now. It's a very expensive step for us because we have to buy the sugar maple tree, mm -hmm. process it into a charcoal. We have a 1% loss of product in that area, and we're all time replacing mellowing that. So it's a never ongoing cost for the making of Jack Daniel.